Hey guys, welcome to our second episode of Tech Wave. It's been a little while since I've done one of these because I've just been so just busy with all kinds of news and stuff happening. It's been tough to get to this, but I'm happy that I can finally do another episode because I like doing Tech Wave. And the product we're going to look at today is one that it is a new product, by the way. It's not a used one, so we get to unbox it too. This is exciting. Uh, it's one that I've needed because if you've watched my live streams, you know I uh, have been using a terrible controller, actually. Uh, this has been the bane of my existence with games like Mega Man and any other thing I'm playing on the computer right now. It is a very sticky Power A PS3 controller that has done me no favors when trying to face bosses like Toxic Seahorse or Gravity Beetle. There's several in Mega Man that have been really killing me because this controller sticks you can hear it. Oh, got stuck. So, yes, I'm very excited. Also, I don't know, like the, the D-pad or like the, the whole setup. I don't know. It bothers me. So, what do I do? I get a, a, I look online and I get the one controller that is highly rated. And that one is the SNES 30 by 8-bit do. Or 8-bit do. I don't know what it is. It's one of the two. It's spelled 8-bit and then do. So I'm going to go with 8-bit do. But why would I get this controller over any other one? Well, it for one, it's a Super Nintendo controller that is supposed to be very high quality, which we'll find out. It also has support for Bluetooth, which is great. So if you have uh, like a like a, a tablet, for example, and you want to play games on that, it can sync to it. Maybe you have a phone, it can sync to that. Guess what? It can also sync to your Retron 5, so you can throw those junky controllers out in the yard. And what's cool is it also has upgradable firmware, so if they do release a new firmware that lets it do things like sync to, I don't know, the Retron 6, if they ever come out with that, or other systems, it can they can update it. You actually plug it into your computer, and it'll actually update it. Other than that though, guys, it has a 480 milliamp hour battery that is rechargeable. So you plug it in, it'll recharge. There's no double A's or anything here. And like I said, it's compatible with iOS, Android, Mac, Windows, all that good stuff. And you can actually change the keys around, which is cool, like the buttons, and it has a turbo button. So, you know what, let's get this guy open. It looks like it's pretty straightforward opening, but let's see what we get at least in the box before we take it apart. Uh, so here we go, guys. We have the 8-bit do box here. I kind of put you guys up a little bit so you can see it a little better. And it looks like it actually slides open right here. Let me get a little help with that. All right, careful. There we go. The hammer never fails, guys. 8-bit do right on the, on the box. I'm pretty sure it's 8-bit do. Man, I hope it is. That's all I'm saying right now is 8-bit do. Very nice cardboard box. And there we go. It's actually... Wow, that actually looks... Very much so like a Super Nintendo controller. Ooh. Sorry, let me turn this around real quick. That is a... That is a really nice click to it. <laughs> I gotta say, that actually feels that actually feels really good. Huh. Alright, let's take this right out here. Ooh. Wow, that actually... That actually has some weight to it. It actually feels really nice. You know how you get those, um... Those third-party controllers that feel kind of junky. Uh, this is not one of those controllers. This feels as close to a Super Nintendo controller as I can imagine a wireless one by Nintendo would have been. Let's say Nintendo made one. This is this is nice. Well, let's see what else we get in the box. We'll come back to this controller in a second. Uh, looks like they just have like little molding here to hold it where it needs to stay. Pretty straightforward unboxing. I just oh okay. Pretty straightforward. Are these instructions, I guess, for how to... Okay. Yes, instructions for how to sync it up, I guess, which I will have to read because it's going to be used mostly on my uh, mostly on my computer, I guess, for when I live stream with you guys. So hopefully you don't have to watch me die as much. And it does tell you how to... Okay, it shows you how to upgrade the firmware. Oh, good, this side appears to be in complete Japanese. Good. I will keep that because I will need that. Let's see what else we have here. We have something. What is this? Ooh, I'm not opening these boxes very Okay, there we go. What is this? Whoa! That's cool. Oh, neat. They actually send you a little extra thing here. This is an 8 bit do FC30. This is like a little keychain? What is this? I guess. 
Since 1983. Oh, that's cool. FC 30th. Oh, that's neat. Look at that thing. I don't know if you guys can see it really well. Tell you what, I'll get you a really nice picture of this right here instead of me trying to show you on the camera that is overhead. I'll get you a really nice picture of that with my DSLR so you guys can see it. And we have something else. I think this is a pin. Maybe? I'm not really sure what this part is. This is supposed to be a ring. What is this? I'm not really sure what this is. Maybe you guys, one of you guys will tell me. I. That's supposed to be a, a ring or something? I don't know. Interesting. Okay. But the controller itself is pretty cool. Oh, wait. There's something else. Uh, this is just the cable. This is... Oh, nice. It's one... Okay, so this is one of the cables that doesn't... It appears is one that doesn't tangle. It's one of the flat cables. I actually like that. Pretty good length to it, too, actually. This is probably, I would say... Probably a four to five foot cable that's here. So, not a bad little cable. That's good. But... You know what we need to do, guys? Let's take this thing apart. It looks pretty straightforward, but let's see what's going on inside this guy. I will say the nice thing about this is it looks pretty straightforward. There's only five screws on the back. Um, I hope this thing works because I haven't even tried using it yet. <laughs> There's no warranty seal from what I can tell, so we'll be okay if it, I guess, if it doesn't work just because I'm not breaking a seal on it. That's going to be the thing I'm going to have to remember, guys, about the switch. I will have to turn it on to make sure it works before I take it apart. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, I could be left kind of high and dry, high and dry there. So we'll have to try that first. Almost there, guys. Four. One more screw. Okay, there's our little battery. Um, I do like. Okay, so the buttons here are their own. I actually kind of like that. They actually have a nice little tactile click to them in here. So what we what we're seeing there, guys, it has an actual like rubber membrane right here for the for the shoulder button. So it has like a nice click there, and that's why it's getting a um, that nice feel. I actually like that a lot. If you get any of those really terrible third party ones, they do not have that. They are just junk, junk clicks. So I actually like that a lot. That's awesome. Very small battery. Like I said, it's only a 480 milliamp hour battery, so it's not large. Um, it doesn't need to be though. It's not powering much, so it's a little guy. It's only it's just it's directly soldered too, so it's not like a clip or anything you remove from. It just kind of hangs there. Uh, the battery is just taped right to the back. Looks like there's a nice little spot for it. So let's see. How do they want me to take this motherboard out? Oh wait, is that a? No, that's not a warranty sticker. All right, good. I was worried I had a warranty sticker. Oh, no, okay. Comes right out. Very good. So the board is just using a standard rubber membrane for everything. It's nothing fancy. Um, where these basically what happens is these here... Let me take this guy out. These here have these, like, um, these rubber pieces. They're almost like sponges. What they do is they just simply click when you press it, and that just connects... All that's doing is connecting any one of these spots that you see on here. And that simply just shorts it out, tells it that that's being pressed. And that's pretty straightforward, actually. This is a nice controller. I, I have to give them credit. This is not a bad controller. It's it's not, all right, I'm not going to, it's not a cheap controller. I will say that. Well, okay, it depends on how you look at it. It's, it's usually anywhere between $35 and $40, depending on where you buy it from. Now, I do, see, I don't like the, the micro USB. I understand that's common nowadays oh and the shoulder buttons use the same thing that's great again cheap ones do not use that i'm very happy with what i'm seeing so far this is i think this is going to turn out to be a very good controller for me I'm, I'm actually really happy hopefully i don't die as much in Mega Man. is that yeah okay good that's the other problem about controller guys is getting it back together can sometimes suck this one actually very easy to put back together because there's not much to it but it's a Super Nintendo controller. I mean, how much do you really need there to be? Make sure everything clicks and feels okay. Like, if you guys had to watch me take apart a PS3 or a 360 controller, it would be absolute chaos because those things are the biggest pain in the world. All right, guys, that's it for Tech Wave so far today. Very excited to try out this SNES 30. This was not a paid promotion or anything. I just 
bought this because I needed a new controller for the live stream. It was getting pretty embarrassing for a while there, playing Mega Man and dying all the time. So I'm hoping this helps out. I hope the range and the Wi-Fi is good, or the Bluetooth is good in it. Now, somebody else may be asking, what do you do if you do not have Bluetooth for your computer? Very easy. I haven't even opened this yet, but basically what you do is you can go on, sorry, let me get, go on Amazon and get one of these guys. This is a pluggable Bluetooth USB adapter. It would work on anything with a USB port, including a Raspberry Pi with Raspbian. So you can use this on a Raspberry Pi as long as you get one of these. So this is gonna go on my desktop that you guys, my stream machine basically, that you guys watch me do streams on. And it's nice because this also has things like Bluetooth 4. Now it comes with a CD-ROM is what it says here, but most times you can plug this into Windows or Raspbian and it'll find the driver automatically. Don't worry about it. And then you'll this gamepad will be picked up. You can then sync it and you're good to go. That's gonna do it for today, guys. Like I said, I will have a full review up of this after I get some time on stream, which you guys should also come watch me on stream to see if I do any better, because I will try Mega Man X3 again with this controller. Uh, it does feel it does feel exactly like a Super Nintendo controller, so I'm very excited to do that. I really want to do more streaming with you guys. I think it's a lot of fun, and I will see you guys probably tonight. I'll try to do a stream, so we'll do that. That'll be fun, guys. I'll see you later on tonight.